Hello, I'm JW. Uh, this time it's the bandsaw once again, and this time we're going to be putting the blade in and uh, seeing if this thing will actually cut something, and of course how to uh, set up the blade and get it properly aligned and all of that. And uh, since last time not a great deal has happened, but I've put the label back on the front here, so we'll just basically glue that on there over the top of the new paint, so that looks obviously reasonable. And I've also put some paint down here on the bottom where those screw heads uh, were exposed, um, just for the mounting feet and the screwing it to the base, so they're just green now to match the rest. Now uh, there were several comments on the previous video, uh, one of which concerned the top adjuster knob here, and several people suggested that it may be that the screw, actual part here with the spring, the spring should be outside of the case, and then obviously it would uh, provide the tension there. Now I have tried it with the screw outside and a washer underneath, but unfortunately the thread only just about then reaches to the actual adjustment mechanism, so you end up with it right at the very top with almost no adjustment at all, so that does not appear to be the correct way of installing it, although, uh, say, with it inside it uh, still has a certain amount of uh, slop on that, so not entirely clear how that was supposed to be done, but uh, we'll have a go with it inside. Outside is definitely not the answer, because the spring unfortunately takes up most of the adjustment distance and then you can only adjust it by literally a couple of millimetres. And I've got two blades here, which are going to be fitting in. Oh, yeah, fit one obviously, but uh, we've got this one, which is a very thin and sort of fine blade, sort of equivalent of the one that was supplied with the thing. And I've also got this other one here, which uh, is somewhat uh, coarser, so fewer teeth per inch there, and it's also slightly wider as well. So this would be for cutting thin materials, sort of thin plywood or something, and this one uh, should be capable of cutting through somewhat thicker materials. Uh, so we're going to fit the uh, large one here, but of course fitting is the exact same process for the smaller one as well. Now what I've got here is the new blade, which is this one in the middle, and this thing on the outside is the old blade, or basically the one that was supplied with the machine. And as I said in the previous video, I'm convinced that someone has just bought the wrong size, because the new one in here is uh, 56 and a half inches, and then this one, which is the one that was with it, measures 57 inches, and it's highly implausible that it's stretched to that degree, and you can see that even though it's only half an inch in the actual length of the blade, when it's in a uh, circular pattern like this, as it's sort of pressed against all of those, at this side here, you can imagine this was like where one of the wheels was, the huge distance in uh, between the correct size and the other one, and that's obviously why previously we couldn't actually get any kind of tension on this old blade, because it was clearly just too big for the machine. Now before uh, fitting the blade, uh, this uh, nut on the back here is uh, the one which was previously graunched down to be super tight, uh, so I put this new one on here, and I've tightened it up so it is still actually movable there, so in terms of the adjuster here it will still move within the slot, but it's tight enough so that it doesn't actually sort of move in and out to any appreciable degree, so it will obviously hold the wheel and the mechanism support on the back in position, so sort of tight enough to be movable but not so tight as to sort of bind on the actual slot here. Now before fitting the blade of course the uh, first thing to do is make sure that it is unplugged because uh, though this is a small machine it's still quite capable of causing fairly severe injury if it was to be turned on while the thing was being dismantled or looked inside. So unplug the uh, power lead there and then we'll just remove the cover. These three uh, screws in the corners, I've already done the other two. So just remove the cover, and I've actually written inside here on the cover the size of belt which goes down at the bottom, and also the blade length for future reference, so that in the future we need to replace these parts. Got the information there, we don't have to start searching around trying to find the correct information. And I haven't painted the inside, somebody did suggest uh, painting the inside, but originally it wasn't painted either, it's just the bare aluminium. This is just a bit of overspray from painting the other sides. And of course to paint the inside now would involve dismantling the whole machine again just to put some paint there. The paint's purely a cosmetic thing anyway, it doesn't have any function because of course aluminium doesn't generally corrode. So uh, though you could paint the inside there's not really a huge amount of point and we're not going to be doing it in this instance. Now it is possible to fit the blade with the table in position, however for the uh, purposes of this video I'm going to take the table off mainly because it will be easier to see the guides and so on to actually get those lined up. But uh, bearing in mind it is perfectly possible to uh, put the blade in place with the table there. It just means that when you get to the guide under the table here you have to sort of fiddle about there 
which obviously is possible but uh, not very easy to see with the camera. So I'm just going to uh, remove the table. So that's the table removed, so just for uh, clarity here you can fit the thing with the obviously the table in position. And the blade we're going to fit on this one is this wider one here, which is a fairly coarse blade, uh, obviously fewer teeth per inch. This is also 3 8 wide, so slightly wider than the other one, which is a quarter of an inch. And it's important to get the blade in the correct direction. And this, as uh, so you hear, the teeth like that are basically pointing in a downward direction, which is what you want, because as it turns it will move downwards through the table. And basically we'll just pull the material down onto that and cut as it goes. And the teeth need to face towards you on this side, so that when you're actually feeding the material through this way, you're actually feeding against the teeth, and of course not the... Uh, back of the blade there. And I've put the guides here and here as far apart as possible so essentially we can just get the blade between those without these getting in the way. And we want to adjust the knob on the top here so that the wheel is at the lowest position so we can get the blade over the top. So I'll just turn that so it's sort of pretty much right at the bottom of there. And then it's a question of taking the blade and just slotting it around the various wheels. Now once the blade is actually over the wheel we can tighten this knob here to a moderate extent to uh, provide a bit of tension here, so not a huge amount at this stage but enough so that it's uh, actually got a bit of resilience in that. And what we need to do now is to arrange the top wheel here which has that tilt mechanism on it so that the blade actually runs across in the centre of the wheel. If it's too far one way or the other it'll actually come towards one edge and then eventually fall off or obviously conversely go off the back if it's tilting in the other direction. And uh, to check this we can actually rotate it using the bottom wheel here and then we can see which direction it's going and adjust the knob on the back to get the tilt correct and then we should be able to then rotate this uh, many turns with the blade remaining in the correct position. This is the top wheel which is the one that has the tilt adjustment and I've just uh, got it in sort of the rough position and we want to have a moderate amount of tension on this so that there is at least some uh, resilience in the blade there, and just rotate the thing by hand at a fairly slow speed. And what we want is to have the blade essentially in the centre of the wheel here, and if it isn't then you can adjust the knob on the back here to do the tilt. Uh, if I adjust it in one direction you can see the blade will gradually move towards the back of the wheel there, and if I tilt it in the other direction you can see the blade will then come over towards the front. Now the adjustment is fairly sensitive on this so it's only a sort of eighth of a turn or so just to get it moving in one direction or the other. So it's just a question of turning it slowly and then just small adjustments on the knob at the back to get it as near to the centre of the wheel as possible. So that looks uh, fairly reasonable and then we can tighten up the wheel say a little more so we get a more sensible amount of tension on there. And see now it's staying pretty much in the centre of the wheel there as the blade obviously goes round through several revolutions. Now initially this is quite a faff to get uh, in position because say it's uh, the tilt of range is actually huge but the adjustment need to get it sort of between in the correct place and falling off is uh, actually quite small so huge amount of adjustment but there's sort of that uh, sweet spot in the middle somewhere which uh, obviously allows it to actually stay on the wheel but uh, once you've got it to stay on the wheel it's then just a very small adjustment to keep it uh, properly centered within the actual top surface of the wheel. This is pretty much the widest blade this can have, the 3 8 so it's pretty much the full width of the top of the wheel there and of course the uh, smaller quarter inch one would uh, be slightly narrow in the top there so it would sit Again, near the middle and have more white space on either side. Now in terms of how much tension to put on, I mean some obviously but not uh, too much. I mean this is not too bad. Um, see there's a reasonable uh, bit of tension in there and so the same here, obviously the same here as well. And uh, this doesn't have any kind of gauge as to how much tension to apply but uh, as long as it's something like that, that would do. I mean if not we can always just uh, make a small adjustment here with the tensioning knob. But uh, as long as it stays on the wheels and isn't uh, likely to slip then that's pretty much all you can hope for with a 
machine of this sort of size. And anyway, it's only the uh, actual back of the rubber belt here, which is providing the drive, so you do need a certain amount of tension here so that the blade is actually pulled onto the back of the rubber belt. Otherwise, of course, slipping here is going to damage the belt and obviously not move the blade through at all. So once it's uh, in position there, it does obviously rotate and it remains on the wheel like that. Then the next thing to do is to set up the guides here to properly support the blade. Now this is the rear guide for the blade and there's the upper and lower ones are exactly the same, so both are identical. And the idea here is that the blade actually goes in this slot and it just uh, literally just slots in the middle there and then this will rotate while the blade is in there and also support the back of the blade so as you're pushing through this will prevent the blade from being bent out of shape. And it's got this little nut here which is used to position this in uh, this direction. So if the blade is here, you want to position this so that the actual slot is perfectly in line with the blade. What you don't want is over here because first of all the blade might not fit in it and if it was here and then sort of started to pull the blade over then of course that's going to lead to the blade being excessively stretched or damaged and maybe even broken. So that little nut there is just the uh, basic distance from the holder, sort of like that. And then on the other end it's just the uh, little nut here and the washers to lock that against the guide. And we've got this little piece of fibre which uh, somebody on a previous comment on the other video did say it was to basically uh, soak with oil and then that will provide a bit of lubrication to this moving part. So basically in the back there where it just revolves against the spindle here. And we don't want oil on the front obviously because that would lead to the blade being oily and transferring the oil to whatever you're cutting but just a small bit in the back there to uh, make sure it rotates smoothly. This is the uh, lower guide and so we've got the blade here and uh, we can adjust this side piece here so it comes up to the back of the blade there so properly supported in the slot and we'll turn that down and we've got the uh, horizontal as it were alignment so that the blade is actually vertical what we don't want is the blade from being pulled one direction or the other and then if I rotate this you'll see it just goes through the slot nice and smoothly there so I think we can actually move that forward just slightly there. So see that just goes through the slot nice and smoothly. And the top one here is exactly the same so we'll uh, do that as well. This is the front guide and this is just basically a plastic roller on a similar sort of arrangement to that. And again we want the plastic roller to be uh, sort of nearly in line with the blade there. And again we don't want this to be so tight, there's a little nut here. If that's too tight then this won't rotate so we want a bit of actual movement there so this can revolve. And as before it goes through here and then you've got the little washer and a nut on the back to secure it. Now this needs to be positioned up to the blade but not so that it's actually touching it at all times. We want it to have a small clearance so this will spin freely. The idea being is if the blade tries to move in this direction it will hit the roller and then it basically won't come out of the slot on the rear one. So as near to as possible but not actually touching the blade. And again we'll just place the washer there and the little lock washer and then we'll just tighten down the nut to secure that in position. So that should spin freely and as the thing is rotated, you see the blade doesn't actually drag on that, but it's sort of almost touching. So if we move that forward, then that would, of course, catch on the roller. So it's just clear of the plastic roller. And again, the upper guides, of course, are exactly the same. So here's both of the guides installed. So I've got the blade in the slot here and here. And then the rollers on the front are free to rotate without actually catching on the blade itself. This top one unfortunately has been a bit chewed by the previous owner. There's obviously a rather mashed bit there, but unfortunately not much we can do about that. And as the blade is rotated, so it will go through the rear slot there. It's obviously supporting the back and it's just clearing those plastic rollers on the front. So that's the way it installed. I'll uh, just put the table back in position. I say normally you could leave that in place. It's just a bit more visible with the uh, table removed for 
the video purpose. But uh, so I'll put the tail back in and I'll also put the cover in the front there and then check that the thing actually runs and then assuming it does we'll uh, try cutting some bits of timber. So I've refitted the table here and also the uh, outer cover because obviously we don't want to be running this with the cover off. If this blade comes off the wheels it could come coiling out here and certainly if it broke it could come uh, flying out at quite a speed. Now on the top here there's actually a hole where you can see in there and actually see the top of the wheel so it is possible to make some minor adjustments uh, with the cover on, as you can say, see through there, just shine a torch in there or something. And there's a similar hole down here, so you can see this one here, and also a hole there, so you can again see the wheel on that side. So it is possible to see all three wheels and the blade on them without removing the cover. Uh, I've actually put a couple of drops of oil on those sort of uh, pieces there for the rear guides, just to provide some lubrication for that rear support there and again underneath as well. So let's see if it uh, does actually work. Well that seems entirely reasonable. And uh, we'll just have a look in the top there. Yes, the blade is still uh, aligned in the middle of the wheel as we would want, so uh, that seems reasonably successful. Now that just leaves the uh, final test of actually cutting something. And I've got this uh, block of wood here, this is just some cheap uh, pine type stuff, just using it to uh, support the motor while it was being painted, hence it's all green on that side and not on the bottom. And this is probably sort of uh, just on a couple of inches thick there, so we can uh, cut through it like this. It's not quite going to fit under there in that direction, so uh, you can't do it like that, but uh, this way will suffice, no problem. And the idea with these here is to get them uh, fairly close to the top of the timber there, and the ones underneath again as close to the table as possible, so you've got the maximum amount of support for the blade in the middle. So uh, let's uh, have a go at cutting this and see uh, how that goes. So as you can see there, that's a fairly decent looking cut. It's actually reasonably smooth. It uh, looks fairly level. There's not too much sort of uh, wonder or weave in that. Not sure whether this table is actually perfectly uh, right angles to the blade, but uh, only it's a test cut anyway. We can faff with the adjustment later on. But yeah, that seems to be uh, completely acceptable. And certainly a decent sort of finish there. So this is a fairly coarse blade, but of course ideal for the thicker materials. And so just look across the top of that, it's uh, pretty flat. I mean, it's uh, not going to get a lot better than that uh, without some really horrendously expensive machine. So that seems to cut reasonably well. And that cutting there was done in real time. It wasn't uh, sped up or anything. So uh, of course that was only a few seconds to get through this fairly thick material. So that's the end of the series videos on the Burgess BBS 20 Mark II bandsaw. And I do not have the instruction manual for this or any exploded diagrams or any other documentation, so uh, please don't ask. Ultimately though, uh, all the information is really in the uh, videos, this one and the preceding two videos, so it's not really much else that any instruction book or whatever could say. And until next time, thanks for watching.